everybody, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So it is a hot day here in San Francisco, and I love it. It's fantastic. So the last couple episodes, I've been talking about Final Cut Pro and Photoshop with its generative AI and how you can do some very interesting things with a video clip as long as it's a locked down shot. In other words, a shot on a tripod. But it got me thinking, what if you could do something with a handheld shot? Could you make that work? Maybe with something like an iPhone. Well, let's check it out. So in our last few examples of using Final Cut Pro and Photoshop's generative AI, we've had lockdown shots that were shot on a tripod. That's not always convenient. So I'm gonna show you a method here that can greatly expand the number of shots that you can use with this methodology. The key is that you have a handheld shot, but you're holding it as still as possible. So in this example, I have this clip from my iPhone that I shot uh, day before yesterday in Mill Valley. I've imported it in Final Cut Pro. I'll press C to select it. I'll press the forward slash key to play that selection. And I've already got looping enabled with Command L. And you can see this is a handheld shot. I was just walking across the street and I stopped and shot this. And it's not great. You can see there's a fair amount of movement, especially in the beginning. So the key here is to use the tools in Final Cut to stabilize the shot and completely lock it down. So step one in this process is to stabilize in tripod mode. Command 4 for the inspector, and I'll enable stabilization. Now, normally you'd see an analysis kick off, but I've already stabilized this clip before, so you're not seeing it go through the analysis. It usually takes a little bit of time. And depending on the amount of movement in the clip, you may or may not have tripod mode be available. So it's important to hold the camera as still as possible. If it's a pretty still shot, you should get tripod mode available. It's not turned on by default. So if I play this clip with stabilization without tripod mode, you can see we still have movement in the shot, especially at the beginning there. It's more stable, but there's still movement. So now I'll enable tripod mode and play that back, forward slash key. And now we have much more of a lockdown shot. There's a little bit of warping going on because it's trying to compensate for me tilting the iPhone in different directions. But I know it's not gonna get in the way here because I've played with the shot already. So that's step one. Step two is, we could just send this as a still to Photoshop, but then it would be difficult to identify precisely the area that we want to affect. <laughs> what are we trying to do here? I want to remove this car from the shot. So that's my goal. I want to keep the people in the shot. I want to keep these, you know, these moving lens flares, everything that indicates we've got somebody walking on this side, we've got people walking on this side. It's very clearly a video shot, but I don't want the car in the shot. And I think it's a pretty practical case where you have a shot where you want to remove a moving object. So what we're gonna do in order to clearly identify the area to replace is to use a draw mask. So Command-5 for the effects browser. I'm already in the mask and keying category and I'll double click to add the draw mask to our shot. And if I drag through the clip, we can see the car starts back there, ends up up there. So I'm just gonna start with a rough mask around the area that includes the area where the car is. And then as I drag through it, I can see how I can adjust this. My goal is to get as close as possible, but also think about elements that I may want to keep in the shot or replace in the shot. For instance, since I'm going to replace everything inside this mask, it's going to have to replace this double yellow line. So maybe I can get away with excluding that here, but still keep the car in the shot. We can see it's not in the shot back there. And you want to make sure the shadow's in the shot as well. I'll increase the Bezier hand a little bit down there. And we can come down a little closer. I'm purposely not going to overlap these cars because I'll have it completely replace them. If I, only, if I overlap them like that, it might get a little confused about how to replace them. So I'm going to completely include them. So I get the mask about where I want it. I can go a little bit higher here and I can go a little tighter there. And now to double check it, I'm going to invert the mask to look at the area outside. So this is everything that's gonna stay. And I wanna make sure as I scrub through the clip, I don't see a shadow of the car. We can see I've selected a little bit of the double yellow line. 
So it just helps us make sure that everything looks pretty good in there. That looks great. And then with our mask inverted, I'm going to export a still. This is the area that we want to replace. But I want to see the context of the rest of the shot in Photoshop. So I'm leaving the mask inverted. The next kind of third tip here is to export a still with transparency, which we haven't done before, but I'll show you how this can be helpful in Photoshop. So save current frame. We'll go to settings and make sure we have a PNG selected because it supports transparency. I'll call it for car removal. Save. Go to Photoshop. Command O to open. And open our exported still. There we go. So in previous episodes, I've shown you that you need to draw a selection around the thing that you want to replace. But we don't need to do that since we have transparency. All we need to do is hold the command key down and click on the layer thumbnail, and we automatically select everything that is not transparent. So all we need to do is invert this selection, shift command I, and we've got a perfect selection here. I do want to expand it a little bit because if it fills in just the selection, I might get a thin line of transparency around it. So what I'll do from the select menu is choose modify, expand, and expand it by about five pixels should be enough. You can see now I've got a little bit of room to work with. Great, so from there, it's time for generative fill. So I'll click generative fill, and we have some options here. We could just try with nothing at all. We don't need to type anything in and see what it does. And I like to do that as a starting point. The other option would be to type in road or road with a yellow line. In this case, we excluded the yellow line, so we shouldn't need to add it, but we could add some more descriptive content if it doesn't do quite what we want. But that looks pretty darn great out the gate. We have two other options, this one and this one. Hmm, I like them all. I think I'll go for the first one. So we're good to go. I'm gonna turn off that initial original layer so we just see the part that we are replacing. This is what we're gonna be dropping into our shot. This is the new Photoshop generated area. So file. Export, quick export is a PNG. I'm gonna call this no car. Back to Final Cut, Command I to import, bring it in. In our timeline, I'll press X to select a range. I'll select our new imported still and press Q for connect edit. C to select it in the timeline, forward slash to play. And there we have our car is gone. We've got our complete video shot without the car in the shot, which is just amazing. Now, a couple things I want you to notice. One is when I stop playback, you can see a little line here, but that line disappears on playback and it also will not be there on export. So don't worry about that. But here's something you might want to think about. Let's zoom in to more like 200% to this area. And there you can really see that line. But once again, if I play back, you won't see that line and seems to work great. However, there is some noise in the rest of the shot that isn't in the still. You can see this little flickering because it's noisy. It's a noisy shot in the shadows here. So one thing you can do to really pull this off sort of one step further is to add some noise to this still. So what I'll do in the effects browser here, I'll select all and just type noise. It's in the stylized category, but there it is, add noise. I'll Add it on here. In the inspector, I don't want it to be monochrome, but I want the type to be just uniform white noise or film grain. You can choose. I think the uniform, that works pretty well. You can really see it here. So I'm going to bring the visibility way down because I just want a tiny bit of it in order to blend in with the rest of the shot. And now I've got some noise on that still that matches the noise in the video much better. I'll go back to full frame and play that again. And there we've taken a handheld shot that's got movement in it, and we've removed a moving object from that shot by first stabilizing it in tripod mode in Final Cut Pro, using a mask to identify the area we want to replace, and then replacing that area in Photoshop with generative fill. What do you think? We'd love to know your thoughts. As usual, leave us a comment below. If you like the content, we always ask you to subscribe. It really helps us out. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.